Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Let's stand in the house this morning. I want everybody to take them a good old deep breath and listen to this. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. If you're alive in the house this morning and you've got some breath, let's magnify the Lord in this place. Let's lift up the name of Jesus and worship Him because He and He alone is worthy. Come on, let's worship the Lord in the house this morning. to me like we Strongholds now are 
what I feel. I like what I feel, Brother Gio. I like what I feel in this place this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We want to go to the, take up the offering this morning. If you put up the ways to give, Sister Heidi. Hallelujah. We have Giveify. We have PayPal uh, available at riverbendpentecostal.com. We take checks, mail. You can bring them any, any way you want to bring them. We'll take it. We'll take it. Amen. So thankful for what God's doing in this house this morning. If you put up the prayer, we're going to pray this prayer. Hey, this prayer, this prayer works. It works, Brother Ronnie. It's proven it to me time and time again. God has blessed me in so many ways. Just unexpected, a couple weeks ago, God had given me a, a blessing that I didn't know. It just came out of nowhere. Somebody give me a handful of money. This prayer works, folks. This prayer works. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing, there's not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and return, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in, and I'm blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Tithing in the gold pan, offerings in the wooden pans. Joy of the 
Come on, praise them, praise them, praise them. Come on, come on, just take a second. There's miracles taking place right now. There are healings taking place in the name of Jesus. Come on, just lift them up. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got a scripture this morning that I feel like the Lord is really put on my heart these last few days we'll see what the lord does first john four and four ye are of god little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world there's a lot of crazy stuff going on storms many people fear but we've overcome Brother Shannon, there's something about when you repent and you go under the water and baptize in the name of Jesus, because that's the only way the Bible talks about, and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues. 
I feel, I really hope the Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost here. I feel like the Lord put this in my spirit during, during elements class to share this. Several months ago, right before a game, my coach came up to me. Um, and this is a time where we're supposed to be focused. This is a time where we're only supposed to talk about baseball. And he asked me, Brother, Brother David, how, how could you believe how could you not believe in the Trinity? How could you not believe this? In a matter of eight to ten minutes, people are warming up. The game's getting ready to start. We start in Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. We go from there all the way to the book of Acts, through Acts 2.38, to Revelation. There is one on the throne, Revelation 4 and 2. And in that time, we got outside of time, and there was something greater in me. It was the Lord working through me that, that as I preached the gospel right there in a dugout where the gospel had never been preached before. The gospel had never been preached on a baseball field. The gospel had never been preached there. Not only did my coach listen, the radio announcer came down to listen. Uh, uh, our trainer come up to me, another coach. Players come up and watched around. They listened. Their faces began to change because there's something greater that is in us when we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We got a lot to pray for this morning, but we're going into it with faith. We're going into it. There's something greater in us this morning. Oh, Lord, we love you this morning. I'm so thankful for what's taking place in this morning. I believe miracles are happening. I believe healings are happening. Lord, I pray, Lord, I pray that we choose love. We have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love, and he who dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Here is our love made perfect that we may have boldness. Lord, I pray that we have boldness. I pray that we have boldness to self-evangelize. I pray that we have boldness to share the gospel, Lord. God, I pray, I pray against COVID. I pray against all the teachers that are being affected, the students, Lord. I pray that our children in this church can go to their schools and set the atmosphere that they can preach the gospel. Lord, use our children, Lord. I pray over the hospital workers. I pray against hospitals being filled. I pray for positions to open up there. I pray that you use nurses, that you use doctors to share your gospel, Lord. I pray that we submit ourselves to you, Lord, and I pray over our prodigals. I pray that there's a homesickness in their heart, Lord. As you bring faces to our mind, let us intercede for them for just a moment this morning, Lord. I pray over their children, and I pray that their children can draw them to this church, Lord, and let us just praise you, Lord, in the name of Jesus.
congregation. Come on, lift up your hands unashamed in the presence of the Lord. Unashamed, unencumbered by your failures, by your doubt, by your fear. Just let it be all about Jesus. Let it be all about Jesus right now. Hallelujah. 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 There's some reason why the, the spirit in here right now says you're welcome. You're welcome into my presence. Jesus said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. That's what's here right now. Well, we had a move of God in elements class. Spirit was rich. Sister Crystal, I think we can all acquaint with that lady. We can all acquaint with that woman at the well. Hallelujah. Exodus 11th chapter, thank you for coming to church today. Everyone that's here, all of our guests, uh, help me to, in closing, we've got some folks that are sick, struggling, Sister Callie, Brother Cody, and their family, and uh, uh, Brother Robbie Thatcher called, and little Danny boy is very sick this morning, and uh, we want to remember him in prayer, but I felt yesterday, I, maybe it was Friday, had a quick trip to East Tennessee and I came back and uh, I really feel heavy in my spirit that God wants to fill somebody with the baptism of the Holy Ghost today. I think that's what he came for, is to fill people with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And, and uh, it's promised to each of us Every human being who lives can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and be baptized in Jesus' name. And when you are, your sins are all washed away. That means gone. And Brother David, that means gone forever. Brother Shannon, the Lord is never going to wash your sins away and then bring your past up to you again. Never. Never. Brother Larry, if it's dead, it's dead. He doesn't revive your dead works. I'm glad to know that. When I come into his presence with a broken and contrite heart and a broken spirit, it says, oh God, thou wilt not despise. He doesn't say, I know who you are, know what you've done. He just says, welcome home. I'm not 100% sure we believe that because you won't find that anywhere else in the world other than people that have been changed by the power of the Holy Ghost themselves. Um, we've talked about it so much. She may wish she had changed her mind, but Thursday night we uh, baptized Jen in Jesus' name. And... Uh, before recovery class and I got to tell her the truth I have been I have been thinking about that ever since uh, it's beautiful when somebody's really hungry for God if you're here today hungry for God you find what you came for if you would stand with us if you're able at the honor of the reading of the word of the Lord we'll just read one verse and then we'll pray 
I tried to preach this message back in June, and y'all shouted me down. If that would have happened today, I would have wadded it up and thrown it in the trash. <laughs> and said, Lord, I got the message. But you didn't. And the Lord said unto Moses, please, well, this is not just an obligatory exercise that we just read the scripture before we start preaching. I want this scripture to sink into your spirit and speak to you as an individual, yes. not collectively, but I want you to, to hear it as if it's the Lord talking to me, Brother Terrence. And the Lord said unto Moses, yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt and afterwards. Everybody say afterwards. afterwards. He will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. The picture is when Pharaoh decides to let you go after one more plague. And it's not going to be a matter of request. It's going to be a matter of please leave, get out, go. I want somebody to know your struggle is almost over. It's almost over. A parenthetical reminder. A parenthetical statement is one that really doesn't fit the narrative, but it's like you, you, you write it and then you put a parenthes parenthesis and then you put something in it and it's just clarity. It just... It just opens things up a little bit. It's something that, that you think might be understood, but in case it's not, I'm going to let you know. A parenthetical reminder. Help me pray right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, for your blessings upon this word. It's powerful. It's rich. And I pray faith rises up. At the, at the preaching of the word. Lord, I want to be ready whenever you are to quit. I don't have to preach all of this, but as soon as faith sets in somebody's spirit and they come forward, you'll fill them with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I believe that and I pray it according to your will. That's your plan for this service. We thank you, Lord, for goodness, grace, and mercy. We thank you that you're no respecter of persons. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to keep carrying our shame, not another second. Today's a new day. Today's a new day. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. You can be seated if you'd like to. And the Lord said unto Moses, there's going to be one more plague upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt, and afterwards, he's going to let you go. When he shall let you go, he'll surely thrust you out hence altogether. Israel's been in Egypt for over 400 years. They are in Egypt because God sent them there. It started out as a blessing, and the people of God have been so blessed and grown so much that Egypt got afraid of them. And the way the, way the enemy desires to bring you down, Brother Jerry, is often not kill you, but just enslave you and oppress you and put you to work for him. Somebody's been working for the enemy, but you're turning your notice in today. You're letting him know you're leaving. It's a parenthetical reminder. When they enslaved the children of Israel, for instance, they decided they're not going to let them have no more babies. And about the time Pharaoh decided he wasn't going to let them have no more babies, they started having more children, and they got stronger. And so the enemy had to put the screws to them, if you'll let me say it that way, tighten things down on them, making things harder and harder and harder on them. They started telling them to make bricks out of mud with no straw, and, and they had to just keep working harder and harder. And then they decided that they were going to kill all the little boy children and throw them in the Nile River. And Brother Richard, somebody needs to hear that it always gets the darkest right before the dawn. The leaving process, I feel Jesus right now. My goodness. The leaving process has been painful. Somewhat for Israel and a whole lot for Egypt. There have been nine plagues 
that had been poured out upon Egypt. And several times, it looked like Pharaoh was going to let them go. It looked like victory was within their grasp, but then he yanked it back from them. And the pressure hasn't stopped. Somebody say amen. amen. The pressure hasn't stopped. Each time Pharaoh changed his mind, things got a little tougher. Moses, who was always going to be the one to lead the children of Israel out of bondage, but he had to go through his own pressure to become what God needed him to be. He's now standing in the presence of Pharaoh for what would be the last time. He will now declare in Exodus chapter number 11 the tenets of the last plague, which we now call the Passover. And he would prepare the children of Israel in how to miss out on the plague. And the only way to miss out on death was the blood. That's a message for another time. Understand the children of Israel have been through a lot. They've been on the precipice of deliverance several times only to be snatched back by the fickle whims of Pharaoh. Verses 1, 2, and 3 of Exodus 11 are parenthetical. They don't fit the narrative. They don't fit the present circumstances, but they're placed there as a reminder. They're placed there as a, let's get your focus back. In this case, a reminder that afterward is almost here. You know what afterward means? It means that what I'm going through right now is not, not going to kill me. It means that what I'm struggling with right now is not going to destroy me. There's going to be an afterward. Oh, hear me right now. Your trial is not going to be your identity. We are not going to be known as the, the COVID generation. We're going to be known as an overcoming generation. We're going to be known as a victorious people. It's a reminder that these plagues, that these obstacles, that this bondage and this oppressive servitude is almost over. Exodus chapter 12, I love this right here. Let the word sink into you. I ain't trying to win no races about the longest message tonight. I promise you. And when faith rises up in you and you receive what God has for you, just go ahead and let it fly, baby. Go ahead and let it fly. Come on, we'll be done when you're ready. Yeah. That's right. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Exodus chapter 12, verse number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. Everybody say they're still there. They haven't got out yet. There's one more plague. There's one more mountain. There's one more river to cross. One more. But the Lord spake to them, will somebody let God speak to you in the land of Egypt? You don't have to come out to see the victory of the Lord. This month shall be unto you a beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Now hear me, they aren't out yet. They've been a long time on this roller coaster of hopes and dashed hopes. They woke up a lot of days and thought they had the victory and they went to sleep that night depressed and discouraged because they didn't win. And just in case they feel like saying, I'm not sure I can make it, or I don't think I can stand another disappointment, in the middle of a life-changing narrative, God interjects a parenthetical reminder. Not only are you coming out, but the day you come out is going to be the first day of the rest of your life. As a matter of fact, oh, hear me right now. As a matter of fact, we're going to write a new calendar. Your day of deliverance. It's January the 1st. We're going to change your whole world. And when you come out, it's going to be the first day of the rest of your life. Well, that's not just good preaching. That's truth. The Lord said, I'm going to change your world so much that the first day of your life is going to start the day you're delivered. Amen. Uh, 
Oh, we like to preach today is the first day of the rest of your life and be all motivational speaking and stuff. But the Lord said, I'm not in the, in the business of making you feel better. I'm going to show you that I'm going to change your life forever. It's... I'm sorry, excuse me for being excited. When the Lord said in Egypt, Brother Ronnie, it's just a parenthetical reminder. They said, it ain't over yet, but it almost is. You haven't won yet, but you're going to. You haven't been delivered yet, but it's going to be great. And it's going to be so great. Everybody's going to get new birthdays. Everybody's going to get new anniversaries. Everything. Then if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I want you to know that he didn't stop with new things back in Egypt. He didn't stop with new things back in the Exodus. But Brother David, it's that truth for somebody today. Now to our guest, we are crazy. You know why I'm crazy? I got hope. <laughs> I got hope that the hell of today is going to be the heaven of tomorrow. I got hope that the scars of my past failures are, are only going to be reminders of how great my God is. I have hope that we got some empty seats this Sunday, but that next Sunday they're going to all be filled up. I've got hope that we got some sick folks, but they're about to be healed. I got hope that we got some bound folks, but they're about to be delivered. I got hope that we got some people that's got their mouth shut, but it's about to be open. When first I heard of Pentecost, I thought it was a shame that such unholy teaching should be taught in Jesus' name. They said it was in the Bible, and I didn't want to doubt. So I went around the corner just to hear them sing and shout. It's real. It's real. Let me tell you something. What you're feeling right now ain't because G.L. King's a great speaker. What you're feeling right now is faith is rising in this room, and he responds to faith. He responds to faith. Oh, hear me right now. Jesus is in the room. God Almighty is in the room. The Creator is in the room. The Deliverer is in the room. This is not an accident. This is not a game. But Jesus is in this place right now. Come on, come on. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. He's worthy. He's worthy. Moses a glimpse into the end and he told him that the end was in sight one more plague and there's going to be an afterwards and you won't have to ask your enemy to let you leave you won't have to pray for deliverance but he's not only going to he's not only going to set you free he's going to push you out the door and he's going to pay your way to the promised land it's the truth it's the truth. Because he told them in 11 and 1, 2 and 3, he said, go to your neighbors and tell them you need all their valuables. And they're going to be happy to give them to you. Oh, let me tell you something. Faith is rising up in you to the point that even the enemy's pulling for you. Oh, I don't think you heard me. Read it in the book. That's what it says, 11 and 3. It says, Moses was considered a great man in all of Egypt, all of Pharaoh's uh, soldiers and all of the Pharaoh's men. Everybody is rooting for Israel except Pharaoh. Right. What do you think is going to happen in hell right now when about 75,000 of his imps are sitting on the edge of their seat like they're watching a good movie waiting on you to get delivered and so powerful is the move of God in you that even hell's pulling for you. The devil ain't on your side. But I want you to know it's so much the will of God you be delivered. Even hell knows we might as well pull for him because we can't stop him. Amen. 
We can't stop them. Well, oh, I feel like preaching a little bit this morning in case you can't tell. Not only is Pharaoh going to let you go, he's going to ask you to go, and he's going to pay your way. You aren't bound. You haven't left Egypt yet, but you're already free. Your freedom is a done deal, and the enemy is very soon going to receive the revelation of that fact. You never belong to him anyway. You are always only going to be there a little while. Somebody here in the Holy Ghost right now, you are destined for your problems. You are destined for your failure. You are destined to be a woman that has five ex-husbands and rejected by the one you got now. You are destined to run into Jesus Christ at the well in the middle of your problems, and he's going to change your life forever. I know I'm a little, uh, little bit out of there to this morning, but you know what this service is for somebody, Brother Jerry? You know what this service is for somebody? You know what this service? This is a well. This is a well in the middle of Samaria. This is a well in the middle of a mess. And Jesus showed up today because you are here. Oh, hear me right now. The Lord didn't move into this room right now and see you sitting there and say, oh, I didn't know they were coming. You might say, and it's okay, all of this is for me. That's how it is, Brother David. You think the Lord, we, we do that sometimes. We go down checking the list, they're there, they're there, they're there. Though they ain't there, it's going to be a terrible service. God ain't never done that. He's never, he's never governed his move by who's in the house. If somebody's here, he's gonna move. And he's gonna move in the way you need him to. Early in his earthly ministry, ooh, Jesus. Hope you don't have no roast in the crock pot today because he might have put a, should have put an extra little bit of water in it. I hope the Lord moves so good that while you're eating that cremated roast, you're thanking the Lord for it. <laughs> Brother Terrence, I believe he's going to. That's right. We talked about it over there. There's some testimony being born today. Right. Early in his earthly ministry, boy, y'all feel the power of the Holy Ghost? Y'all feel Jesus? My goodness gracious. I wish y'all could all be up here, but I'm glad you're not. I'm glad you're out there. But it ain't bad out there either. That's why I keep, I be always coming out there. Jesus chose 12 men who would become his disciples. The majority of his time and teaching would be spent on them, with them, and to them. They would be, these 12 disciples would be the tip of the spear to the evangelism efforts in the New Testament church. They were, with the exception of Judas, who's been replaced by Matthias, all 12 present at the birth of the New Testament church, which is in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, not Romans 10. The church is born in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. Simon Peter stood to preach the first message and the remaining 11 disciples stood right next to him. Each of these men were martyred for the cause of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is all but one. His name was John, but that wasn't from a lack of trying. The enemy tried to kill him in numerous ways. And finally, some 70 years after the death of Jesus Christ, during which the other 11 had been put to death, John, whom they couldn't kill, was taken to a rocky island called Patmos and they dumped him out to die. He had endured. Oh, the Lord knows you've been through some stuff. But you know what? It didn't kill you. It didn't kill you, but it made you ready for today. 
He had been through countless struggles and attempted executions. With according to Tertullian, the grand finale was they boiled the Apostle John alive in a pot of hot oil. But you know what happened when the, when the, bowl, when the pot dried empty? There he was. So hear me right now. I'm about to preach to somebody for just a second. So they decided if we cannot kill him, we will isolate him. It's true. In an apparent attempt to just leave his demise up to God, he's now on this rock pile called Patmos. It's a little island in the Aegean Sea about 60 square miles, and it was meant to be inhabited by the bones of John. It was there, all alone from the rest of the world, battle scarred and weakened but not dead, that God gave John the greatest parenthetical reminder the world has ever seen. It's called the book of Revelation. Verse 1, chapter 1 says, The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John, who bare record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of the things which he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the word of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Verse 9 says, I, John, who also am your brother, which means, you know what? He ain't no better than me. Same as us. And companion in tribulation. Uh-oh, you know what that means? The pressure you've been going through, other people done been there. You're not the only one. Yeah. And in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. In verse 10, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. You know what that means, Brother Larry? When it came time Church day rolled around. You know what John did? He went to church. And he didn't, oh God. He didn't just show up. He didn't just go to the edge of the water and slick his hair back, wipe his eyebrows down a little bit, gargle a little bit of salt water, and go sit down on a rock and say, I'm here. But Brother Ronnie, he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Do you know what that means? That means the devil can't hide you nowhere that the Lord can't find you. Come on, that's right. That's right. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Say, what did he say? I'm about to tell you. But you know what? It don't matter, Brother Terrence, because guess what? He turned around, and there he saw him. Oh, you made a promise. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you, but I'll be with you all the way to the end of the world. Brother Larry, it was the will of God that you say what you did this morning. Do you know the Lord never left you even though you left him? You know how close he was following? Close enough to hear when you called his name. Yes. Yes. Brother Larry testified in Elements class about God using him in work while he was in the middle of being completely backslid. And when I say completely black, backslid, he was way out there. Now, he don't like to tell all that, and I ain't going to tell it either, but he's a long way from sitting up here. 
And he tried to prove every day, all the time, that he was not one of them. But the Lord put a situation in your path. And the next thing you know, I know this sounds like heresy to some, but he might have been telling the nasty joke at first break. But at second break, the opportunity came and the Lord said, I want you to know I'm still with you. And not only am I still with you, but the calling I put on you ain't never left. And the blessings I put on you ain't never left. And let me show you. I don't know why that scares us so bad, but we're about to get delivered from it. And every time you see somebody that's a backslider at the mall, you're going to stop avoiding them. You know why we avoid them? Because we don't know what to say. Because we're embarrassed because they might look like this, that, or the other. They might be acting like this, that, or the other. But you know what? When we pass by them, might be the time that God's about to rise up in them. And that might be the afterward. You might be there for the celebration. You might be there for the deliverance. You might be there to be right in place when God brings them out. Don't you underestimate. Hear me right now. Don't you underestimate God doing anything in anybody's life. We might have wrote them off, but he didn't. Please be seated. I'm trying to preach in a hurry, but I ain't, I'm having too much fun to rush too fast. And I heard, oh, Lord. And I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. You know what that means? That means it was very loud and very clear and very boisterous because he's about to make a statement. You ain't off this island yet. You ain't been delivered yet. You ain't been caught up yet. But look what he said. This is what the voice said. I am. That's enough right there. I am. Oh, Lord. Brother Larry, he was there in Genesis when Moses was in the desert. And he's there in Revelation when John is in the desert. And guess what? Wherever you are, he's there. Just listen. He said, I am Alpha and Omega. The first and the last. What you see, write it in a book and send it to the seven churches. There you go, Miss Jane. Which are in Asia, in Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And then the angel of the Lord began to give John words and pictures and prophecies and timelines. The imagery of which is very disconcerting and very perplexing. Some of these things have already happened. And some of those things are yet to happen. But in 19 and 1, and after these things I heard a great voice of much people. (laughs) I just got to stop right there. I heard a great voice of much people. And one time I was in St. Louis and there was a ball game going on. It was the playoffs. Bush Stadium was packed to the gills, but I wasn't there. I wished I was, but I wasn't there. I was just outside. And somebody got a hit. One of the Cardinals got a hit. And that stadium started sounding about like that. And I got goosebumps because I thought, that sounds like heaven. Oh, they were clapping and hollering, and shaking, and yelling, and jumping, and thumping. Yep. Let me tell you something. You know where they learned how to do that at? Church. Oh, don't think I'm crazy. Don't think I'm crazy. The day of Pentecost rolled around, and they all got the Holy Ghost, and I'm about to get on it later. But you know what they mistook them for? Bunch of drunk folks. You want to know why? Because when you got what I got, you can't sit still. 
And when somebody starts preaching the word, something starts burning inside of you. And sometimes it starts in your feet, Sister Maria, and it works its way up into your legs, and it works its way up into your heart, and it expresses itself out your mouth, and you got to lift your hands, and you got to lift your voice, and you got to get out of your seat, and then you got to jump, and then you got to spin, and then you got to clap, and then you got to holler, and then you got to be happy. Because you know what's happening? There's a voice behind you that's saying, I am Alpha and Omega and first and last. And you know what's happening. You know who's in the room. Don't you think for one second it's because of who's singing or because of who's preaching. We don't behave that way because we're happy with who all's here. We ain't behave that way because we're happy Jesus is here. Maybe for the first time you're feeling the presence of the Lord. And it might be just in time. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people. I didn't even get to preach what I felt about that. So I got to do it again. You know what it means? There's going to be more than a few who make it through. It's the same spirit moving in here. When I read that, same thing, old Elijah. Oh, I'm the only one. Old Elijah. Elijah, I'm the only one. The Lord said, you better shut your mouth, boy. You better shut your mouth and quit feeling sorry for yourself. You're a long way from the only one. Matter of fact, I got 7,000. 7,000 who said we won't bow our knee to Baal. I got, you know what? I heard the voice of much people. I, I, I know I can't sing worth a flip, but I got a lot of them going on. I've been singing this a little bit lately. Oh, there's going to be a meeting in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by. I'm going to meet to meet you over there in that home beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never been heard by mortal ear. It will be glorious, I do declare. And God's own son will be the leading one at that meeting in the air. It's what's happening. It's what's happening. I come preaching to you. Am I doing all right, Brother Richard? All right. You make sure you let Sister Meredith know that you was with me. Because if I go past a certain time, I ain't saying no more. I'm coming to a close. I am. Much people in heaven. Won't you go with us? I'm on my way. When I pray the Lord's Prayer pattern and I do our Father, that's connect point, who art in heaven, you know what I say, Brother Shannon? I got to get my focus there because that's where I'm headed. That's all, I'm on my way to heaven, Brother Ronnie. I don't apologize for that. I love living down here. But if the trumpet sounds this morning, it's going to be peace out. I might see you later and I might not. But I love you and I'm going to preach for you and I'm going to reach for you and I'm going to try to help you. But when the trumpet sounds, it's every man for himself. I'm out. Huh? Huh? And these people are in heaven and they're saying first thing, hallelujah. They tell me that hallelujah sounds the same in every language in the world. So we're going to start with that. And it'll be one voice. Can you imagine? From Africa and Asia and Europe and North America, South America, Antarctica, Australia. All different colors, all different tribes, tribes, creeds, and origin. That's right. Hallelujah. You know what? We might like it so much, Brother Shannon, that we just say it a few times. Can you hear it just like a crescendo of praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know what they say then? Salvation. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to praise him. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to declare I made it. Yes. 
Oh, that ain't doing for you what it ought to do for you. <laughs> Come on now. Look, he kept his word. He made a way, Brother Blake. And he showed me the way. And I walked in it. And guess what? It worked. His promises are true. I made it. Then they say, glory. That is the inherent, intrinsic worth of God. It will be then, ladies and gentlemen, where it is revealed to us how good he really is. Say, what does that mean? That means as good as he's been to you now, it's not as good as he really is. What he's done for you up till now, it's not what he's going to do for you on the way to the end. And then, Brother Larry, when we get there, there's more. Say, I've done heard all this, and I've heard all this, and I've heard all this. You know what I just said? Baptizes that. Yeah. Romans 3 and 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You might get ready to music, but be ready to sit there a minute. I may not be where I think I am. <laughs> Romans 3 and 23 says, For all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. Matthew 21 says, you bring forth a son and call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. When they declare glory in heaven, you know what it sounds like? It worked. The blood of Jesus took away all my sins and made a way for me to be in the presence of the Lord. And the power of my sins were destroyed. He promised it. And they're saying he kept his word. Then they say power. Just to continue in thought, the ability of him to perform. And then you see what it says? Unto the Lord. That's the most beautiful word right there. Our God. You know what, Brother David? He's your God, but he's my God too. And he's your God, but he's my God too. And he's your God, he's my God too. And everybody you meet, everywhere you go, on the street, on the TV, on the internet, everybody you're connected with, he's their God too. The Lord our God. All tribes and nations and backgrounds and races with one voice, praising one God, saying the same thing. Hallelujah. We made it. Sin couldn't hold us back because Jesus did it. That's a parenthetical reminder of one more plague to come, one more mountain to climb, one more struggle, one more. We're almost there, Sister Maria. You know what? It's a parenthetical reminder that says you ain't out yet, but you're about to be. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, 
Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost power. Come on, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let's stand. What just happened is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, 13, 14, talks about the gifts of the Spirit. That's simply the gift of tongues and interpretation, and it is a word straight from heaven. Somebody was doubting that the word was, tr not that the word was true, but the word was true for them. Because what's happened in this place today is undeniable. It's undeniable. But now the word the Lord has spoken to us. What we've done today is shown you that the greatest parenthetical reminder is heaven. There's nothing here that can compare to heaven except the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We've shown us a glimpse of heaven, a multitude of people shouting praises, perfect praises unto the Lord with one voice. They're celebrating the ultimate victory. But how do we get there? How do we get to heaven? In John chapter number 3, Nicodemus came to Jesus. He was drawn by what he felt. He was drawn by what he saw. He was drawn because, Brother Terrence, everybody's born with that empty spot in them that only Jesus can fill. Jesus responded to his questions and said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, how can a man return to his mother and be born again? And Jesus answered, John 3 and 5, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, that's baptism, and of the Spirit, that's the Holy Ghost, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That's how you got here. That which is born of spirit is spirit. It's a different event, Brother Shannon. It's a different birth. It indeed is a new day, Brother Jerry. Marvel not that I said unto you that you must be born again. The wind blows where it listeth. You hear the sound thereof. You can't tell where it's coming or where it's going. But nobody ever doubts the wind's blowing because they can see the effects of it. So is everyone that is born of spirit. Jesus is speaking of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was given on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Afterward, many folks heard about this happening. They came to see what it was all about. And Peter, standing up with the eleven, began to preach to them of what was happening. They heard him preach, and they were powerfully moved. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent. We're about to do that in just a minute. We'll teach you what it is. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Being baptized in water in the name of Jesus is not for the benefit of those watching you. Now, I just felt like I needed to say that because I've had about three or four people tell me lately that they believe baptism was so everybody else could see you go down in water. That's nuts. The book of Acts says you're baptized for the remission of your sins, the remitting, the washing away, the purifying. Jen, we leave them in the water. 
and the water symbolizes the burial. Because the gospel is the death, the burial, resurrection. Repentance is the death. Baptism is the burial. And receiving the Holy Ghost is the resurrection. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise. Remember Brother Burke taught us it's a gift, it's a promise for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. You say, how do I save myself? Obey the word. Because he chose you to come today. He chose to let you feel the presence of the Lord and to hear the gospel preached and to hear hope preached. But you have to choose to obey him. Just in a moment, I want to ask you, if you want to experience receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I want you to come forward. Just a moment. Well, come on. Come on, everybody. You, you don't have to just want to receive the Holy Ghost, but everybody that believes what I'm preaching is true, I'd like for you to come to the front and gather around here. If you haven't received the gift of the Holy Ghost, please come. Now, I'm not really sure what that purple that Sister Sharon talked about from heaven talks about, but there's somebody in here, you know exactly what heaven just said. So we're all going to repent because we all need to repent. Amen? Amen? The Bible says if you say you have no sin, you're a liar. We all have to repent. What we're, if you've never repented of your sins before, what we're about to teach you, you will need the rest of your life. Repentance is a child of God's best friend. He said, I write these things to you that you sin not. I don't want you to mess up. But if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, the man Christ Jesus, God robed in flesh. We're going to ask God to forgive us of all of the sins we're aware of and the sins we're not aware of. They're called secret sins in the Bible. Things we did, Brother Jerry, we didn't know what was wrong when we did it, but now we do. God, show us. We declare not, repentance is not just I'm sorry and I'm done. But it is, I have lived a certain way all my life, Lord. And I did certain things and I followed certain directions. But in this prayer, I'm turning around. And I'm no longer going to follow what I want, but I'm going to follow what you want. I'm going to do what you say. I'm going to live my life. And everything that's behind me, I want you to forgive me of it. Matter of fact, it's called the death because I want to die to it. I want to die to that. I want to follow the leading of the spirit, not the leading of the flesh. I want to not be led by my own desire, but be led by the spirit. That's how simple repentance is. So I would everybody that's up here would pray this prayer with me right now. In your own way. You don't have to say every word I say, but if you're not sure what to do, feel free. I'm good at repenting. You want to know why? Good at messing up too. Lord Jesus, I love you. And I'm thankful for your word and for your spirit and for every promise. And I'm so thankful for Calvary. And you paid the price on Calvary that I might be free from the power of sin and death. God, I ask you to forgive me for everything, anything, even that gets on the border of what's right or wrong or what's pleasing to you or displeasing to you from this moment till the day I was born. I ask you to forgive me of every sin, every weakness, every mistake, every mess up, every stupid word I've said, every bad place my feet have taken me, every crazy thought I've had in my mind, every
everything I've listened to that I shouldn't, everything I've touched that was ungodly or unholy. Please forgive me, Lord. I want to follow you. I want to be led by your spirit. I want to do what you would have me to do. Not my will, but yours. Not my way, but yours. Lord, I'm going to follow you. It's my intent to follow you. I'm asking you to help me. I want to die to the old me. I want to die to the old man. I want to die to who I used to be. I want to die to my old cravings and my old addictions and my old chains and my old habits. I want to die, Lord, to that. I want to crucify it intentionally, intentionally dying to my sinful flesh. Lord, I don't want to be led by my desires, but I want to be led by your desires. I want to follow the leading of the spirit, not the flesh. So would you forgive me? I'm asking you to forgive me. I'm telling you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord, for everything I've ever done. Everything I've ever done that was displeasing to you and everything that's in me that might hinder your spirit from flowing freely through me. I want it gone. I want it, I want it gone in the name of Jesus. We have to want to be filled with the Spirit of God. We got to focus on Jesus Christ now. You only have to think about your past. If your past is still cropping up, you need to go back to repenting. Repent till it's dead. Did you hear me? I said repent till it's dead. It has no power. It has no authority. The blood of Jesus is bigger than any sin you've ever committed. I want you to have faith that you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The next thing we're going to do is we're just going to start worshiping God. You open your mouth and worship Him. Say, how's worship? Talk good about Him. How about what we're going to do in heaven? Hallelujah. Salvation, glory, and power. Lord, I lift you up that we're going to praise Him. If you follow these steps, we're about to start praising the Lord. If you have followed these steps with an honest heart and you've truly repented and you truly have faith that God will fill you with his spirit and that it's for you, when we begin to worship God very quickly, you will begin to hear words in your mind, but they're not in your normal language. You will begin to hear words. And Brother Jerry, they sound like baby talk. They don't, they don't make no sense. They don't even sound right, but they'll be there. And if you'll have faith to surrender your tongue and your mouth to the Lord, which is in effect surrendering your mind to the Lord, and just begin to speak that out, it is the evidence that you've received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Tongues is not the Holy Ghost but it's the evidence that you've given your whole self to the Lord. Cause you see our tongue's the most jacked up part of our body. And when we surrender it to the Lord, we surrender everything else is gravy after that, right? So if you have repented of your sins, how many people in this room have received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues? I want you to look around, a lot of hands up, a lot of hands up. No, September the 28th, 1982, I was nine years old. I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost over in the family center when it used to be our church. But I've got it a few hundred times since then, maybe thousands. Matter of fact, I want it every day, Brother Jerry. But I'm gonna tell you something. It's the most powerful experience you'll ever have as a human being, this side of heaven. Because Ephesians 13 and 14 says, in whom ye also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Look at verse four, the next verse, which is the earnest of our inheritance. Now, Brother Jerry, earnest, is when you want to buy a piece of property, but you don't have the whole thing, but you're making a commitment to them. And you buy a piece of property for $30,000, but you give them $1,000 earnest money, that's on the whole price, but it's just a part of it. It's just a guarantee. 
to hold it till you get it all. That's what the Holy Ghost is. It's a parenthetical reminder that says you ain't made it yet, but you're almost there. Because you see, the Bible tells us when you begin to speak in other tongues, that's the same spirit that brought Christ out of the grave. Repent it, faith. You begin to praise and worship the Lord with your mouth open, praising him. Like, like Christmas time, when you got the present that you've been wanting for like 10 years, or like when Sister Meredith is seven and she got her first iPhone. She, she was like maybe 10, 11. Something like that. Well, we got a video. Forget that. We got a video of when Garrison got his first phone, period. It was like total awe and total blown away. You got to thank him the same way. If you sit there on Christmas morning and you do all your thinking of your parents in your mind, they ain't going to know what you got going on. But you start opening your mouth and praising God, knowing you've repented, and having faith in God, the Holy Ghost will come. That's right. That's right. Let me tell you this, this one testimony, and then we're going we're to start worshiping the Lord. We had a brother here in church that sought the Holy Ghost and sought the Holy Ghost and sought the Holy Ghost. And so I started telling him just what I told you. I said, you're going to repent, have faith, and then you're going to start worshiping God. And when you do, you're going to be saying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, praise the Lord. But there's going to be words come into your mind for you to say that don't make no sense. That's the sign you've surrendered, and that's the Holy Ghost. He said, my goodness, man. I said, what? He said, been happening to me for weeks. I just wouldn't do it because it was right there, and it don't make no sense to the carnal mind that day. If I'm not mistaken, in the prayer room, before he ever got out in the altar, in the prayer room, he just goes and gets the Holy Ghost. Because Sister Maria, that's the way God intended for it to be. So, we're going to praise the Lord. And you're going to invite a down payment from heaven into your spirit. And start praising him for it. And it's going to happen. Come on. Come on, somebody may not know how to praise the Lord. People that have been here a minute, they better know. Lord, I love you. I praise you. I glorify you and I lift up your name. Yours is a name that's above every name. Lord, your power is beautiful. Your blood is rich. I thank you for mercy. I thank you for goodness and grace and power and hope. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And praise and honor and salvation and hope and strength. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
is wanting to give up somebody here you've been ready to quit but my God says wait it ain't over yet Soon this life Sometimes there just ain't nothing left to say. Brother Terrence, God spoke. Amen. As you make your way back to your seats, we're about to get into the announcements, but can we just give the Lord a hand clap of praise for what transpired in this service this morning? Amen. He's worthy. He's worthy of all my praise. Amen. I believe he's worthy of a little extra when he does something for us. Amen. No prayer meeting tomorrow evening. Secret Sisters drawing today. Church cleaning this week is team number two. That's Brother Terrence and Sister Dana. And please also be watching for guest parking, which includes evangelists and missionaries. And uh, we want to always treat them with the utmost respect. If you'd like to sign up to receive church text and you don't already see Sister Amanda, if you'd like to be placed on a church cleaning team, 
please see Sister Judy Williamson. There's a rally at Malden United Pentecostal Church Friday, September 10th at 7.30 p.m. Guest speaker is Brother Alex Camp, and there's an aftershock for the youth, $7 a piece. Section 4's Got Talent, Games, and Food will be there. Brother Michael Burke is coming to preach for us on Sunday, September the 26th, so you want to be here for that. It's going to be a just a crazy service. I'm believing for greater things. Amen. The annual coat drive this year would like to collect at least 40 new coats for foster children, and the deadline for that is November 14th. So if you're out shopping or you're out somewhere and find some coats on sale, buy a few and uh, donate them. We want to have at least 40. Amen. And uh, is there any birthdays and offerings or birthdays and anniversaries this week? We got one today. I'll meet you. All right, we got one birthday, one anniversary. Is that all of them? Amen. Papa, go ahead and stand up, and we'll sing happy birthday to you first. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day. Go ahead and stand up, and you have to tell Uncle Robert we sang for him, too. <laughs> a happy anniversary to you, a happy anniversary to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy anniversary to you, a happy anniversary to you, and the best one you've ever had. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What's that song said, brother? I've got something to praise God for. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand in the house today. As we're closing, I was asked to please pray specially for Pate Hogan. He's got some big things that the Lord can take care of this week. Right. And I believe that the Lord will go into that hospital room and touch his heart. Yes, amen. And that's going to be a testimony, not just to him, but to many others. I'm believing it. I'm believing it. So if we can't let, I'll pray out right now. Let's pray for him and pray for the safety upon us. And just, there's so many things. We all, if you got a need, raise it, raise it, make it known. And let's pray right now. Lord, I pray, I thank you for what's happened and what's happening and transpired in this sanctuary today. I thank you for your Holy Ghost being outpoured. I thank you, God, for the word that we heard, and I pray that we take it and we, and we have it in our hearts every day. Let us live in the Spirit. Let us receive it every day that we can. God, I want to praise you. I want to live in thanksgiving. God, and I also pray for Pate. I pray that this week that you touch his heart, that you touch his heart right now in the name of Jesus, that you go into that hospital room and that it be a testimony to him and to his family, that it be a testimony to the community under what you can do. God, God, many people watch these services. Pe many people are going to see that we prayed. Many people are going to know where the healing came from. And I'm believing for it, God. And I pray that you keep us safe until the next appointed time. Keep us safe until we're able to minister to the lost world. Keep us, God. Keep us and protect us. And we give it all in Jesus' name. Let's worship him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Shake a visitor's hand. Let them know we're glad that they're here. And you're dismissed.